Lifeline Center is an organization that's been in existence in McKinney for about 30 years. And our primary objective is to help families who are encountering short-term crisis overcome that immediate need, stabilize, and get back to independence as quickly as they can. Uh, uh, ultimately, we hope to help those families avoid becoming homeless. Well, I've been on the board of directors at Community Lifeline Center for about three years now. And I first heard about Community Lifeline Center probably about five years ago or so when I was uh, volunteering as a mentor in the McKinney Independent School District. And I primarily worked with kids who came from challenging family backgrounds who needed just a little extra help getting through the school district. And I started hearing their stories. They would tell me things about, for example, a 10 or 11 year old kid would have to stay home from school to take care of a younger sibling who was sick because their parents had to work and they couldn't miss working because then they missed their paycheck. And as I heard more of these stories, I thought, well, who in the community is helping these kids and these families? And that's how I first learned about Community Lifeline Center. And I loved what they did, so I got involved with the board. Uh, you know, so at City House, our goal is to care for the abused, neglected, and homeless kids, youth, and young adult population. We are, we are very niche into that demographic, and we care for uh, babies all the way up to the, their 20, 24th birthday. And so how we do that, we have five properties, uh, a total of 48 beds. The first property is an emergency shelter, which we call My Friend's House. We do that on purpose because when the kids come to us and we do have babies up to 17 that come to us, uh, we take them back to their schools. And so most of kids in, in a school environment, if there's some something going on, they know and they ask. Uh, where are you staying? And instead of saying a shelter, we say my friend's house. And so in that shelter, uh, it is a short-term emergency stay. We care for about 70% child protective services. Kids that come, that are pulled out of their family environment or home environment. And then the balance of that is the runaway youth up to 17. And when the kids turn 18 or they age out of foster care or they just become homeless for all different circumstances, um, at 18, they can apply for the Transitional Living Program, which is about 18 months. And in that program, um, we, we, we give them all the means that they need to be an independent citizen and self-sustaining lifestyle. And so they stay with us um, on average about 12 to 14 months. And many of them don't have IDs. Many of them don't have an education. They never graduated. So we help them get their GED or if they want to go to college. We help them get a job. They have to be working, volunteering, or going to school 50 plus hours a week. And that is also by design to keep them busy and productive and that type of thing. Well, my name is Lance Olinsky. And I'm the founder of Streetside Showers. And our our mission is to bring hope and help restore human dignity in the form of a hot shower and personal hygiene care. Well, we started Streetside Showers in June of 2017, so a little, little over a year and a half. I mean, it's just uh, we've we've gained some incredible support and uh, you know what we're doing. So we're still a pretty young organization. You know, people ask me all the time, how did you how do you get started? You know, and uh, it actually all started in a bathroom. I mean, my life changed walking into a restroom. And so I was uh, walked into a public restroom here in McKinney and we had a folk, uh, someone that was washing out of the sink who was experiencing homelessness. And I, I saw him, he was just trying to get clean and just washing out of a sink. And I thought to myself, I like, here we are, I live in McKinney, Texas, just such a beautiful city to live in. And yet uh, this person's struggling just to get a hot shower. So that was really the moment that really changed my life, essentially. Uh, because I just, from there, I just walked out and said, we've got to do something. You know, we have lots of mobile services, but but yet to get a to get a shower has just been a challenge for any folks that are experiencing homelessness. Since we started, we've done 3,031 showers. And so, in, in just alone in 2018, last year, we had a full year of shower service. We did 2,599 showers and we've given over 10,000 pairs of socks and 5,000 pairs of underwear. I'm Todd Mark. I'm the executive director for Friends of Consumer Freedom. Uh, we're a nonprofit that provides financial capability, counseling, and education to uh, folks all across Collin County and specifically work with 
homeless uh, populations through several transitional shelters such as Agape Resources Center in Plano. So about a year ago, we started providing direct service and reaching into the community for at-risk populations such as veterans and, and homeless, specifically uh, at Friends of Consumer Freedom. We do counseling with 15 families at Agape Resource Center, which is a transformational shelter. It's a homeless shelter for victims of domestic abuse and violence. And these people are really rebuilding from scratch and. We have the opportunity to do the financial counseling and help them restart from nothing to a point where when they relaunch a year or more uh, into the future, they're able to be self-sufficient and, uh, and live and provide for themselves and their kids on their own. I'm president of the Collin County Homeless Coalition and I also work at Collin College as Director of Business and Community Outreach. My name is Christine Ortega and I'm the Vice President of the Collin County Homeless Coalition. So the uh, coalition is made up of multiple uh, groups of people who really have a heart to respond to this need in our county. Uh, it's made up of nonprofit organizations, it's made up of faith groups, it's made up of uh, educational institutions and our ISDs. It's made up of healthcare uh, service providers, small businesses, corporations. It's made up of anyone that wants to come. We invite them to come and just join with us. We're sort of a big think tank in Collin County and we offer uh, the environment for collaboration and for that synergy of bringing up new ideas and then working together to bring those forth in the county. And one great example, and I'll, I'll let you talk about this, was our Faith Task Force this year. So we have an interfaith group that I have the privilege of serving with and um, as a board representative. And we took our faith community and put them all together in a room and we started exploring um, what's working really well in the county and what are some of the things that we're lacking. And one of the things that really emerged was um, there is no emergency sheltering unless you are a minor um, in this county. And so uh, we took uh, a team of leadership that rose up out of Plano um, through the faith community and they spent some time doing some research of best practices and went and talked to some individuals that we could partner with. And what they ended up doing is finding an, um, a nonprofit who said, we can do this service if you can provide the volunteers. So what came out of that is an overnight warming station in Plano this last year that we're very um, proud of. Um, they've put a lot of work and effort into treating our homeless neighbors really with so much dignity and respect and honor and giving them a place during inclement weather and cold weather sheltering that they haven't had in the past. Um, people have um, passed during cold weather months in our city and um, it's something that we just don't want to see happen again. I think we're much better than this. And so we have over 250 volunteers that have been trained and background checked and who came together for about 23 days this last winter and provided shelters for individuals in the county. So we're really uh, extremely proud of that group. And we think that that's just a start of more that's to come in the county. Right, and while that focus was going on in Plano, uh, the same thing was happening up in the city of McKinney and led by uh, Emmanuel Labor for the overnight weather shelter. So there's a great need to step out and help our neighbors. And the coalition is a, a collaboration of really servant leaders who've said, I'm there, I, I wanna be at the table. And uh, we just also wanna shout out to our city governments because they have been such a support and there's some really great strategic leaders in our cities who are coming alongside and we're kind of walking this walk together. So it's a very, very good thing. So just last year, our uh, support and efforts uh, on behalf of Community Lifeline Center helped 24 families stay in their homes, which we're very proud of being the small organization that we are. Uh, we provide support in terms of things like financial assistance to cover rent, uh, utilities, medical bills. We also provide um, food and hygiene and household items when needed. Um, depending on the needs of the client, we can provide them with job training, um, interviewing skills, financial counseling, uh, life skills training. It really depends on the needs of the individual or the family that we're helping, but we have a, a whole array of services and we partner with a lot of great uh, other nonprofit agencies in the uh, North Collin County area to serve the needs of our clients. When we 
decided to make this move, we had a vision of really creating a space that could provide new clothes for our clients. And, and we choose new clothes because, um, you know, it's, it's a dignity thing. We don't want them to think that all they have to get is used clothes. And so we give them new clothes here. We give them new clothes at our shelter. And we want them to pick it out. We want them to feel like they're shopping for them, to experience that. Many of our kids have not even gone shopping to the mall. And so we uh, came up with the brand name, You, meaning them, Unique Boutique, uh, to make them feel special. So when they go in, they can get shirts, pants, socks, you know, all your underclothes, your shoes, um, and they can, the kids come in here and they know it's their space. They can make a meal, they can get something out of the refrigerator, they can get water, uh, and they have a place to sit and eat, which we didn't have before. We also were able to add a shower and we were able to add washer and dryer, so our kids that uh, don't live with us, but in the evening live somewhere else, on the streets most likely, uh, they can come in and then get the shower, they can get their clothes washed and get fresh, get a meal, they can get bus passes, that type of thing. So right now, uh, right now we're running four different locations right now. We just opened up Irving, so we're serving McKinney, we're serving Plano, we're serving Denton. Uh, we're going to be starting to serve Irving. And so we're running about four shower stops right now during the week, and then we're going to continue to grow because our goal is to get showers into communities that where the folks don't have access to showers. And there are some areas, some communities where the folks can get a shower and that's a wonderful thing. And so if I show up with my shower trailer and it creates awareness and it creates, uh, you know, just some, uh, you know, uh, movement to, to build showers for people, uh, push me out of town and I'll go to the next neck to the next town. So uh, right now, but we're we like to see it two days a week in each community as we grow as an organization. You know, we think about taking a shower and it's such a, it's such a simple thing. That's, you know, people are just like, wow, this is a great idea. And it's easy to overlook. It's easy to just take for granted uh, because it's so simple. It's not a luxury item. I mean, we really feel like every person has a right to be clean. Every person has a right to water and to, to take a shower. It's not a luxury. So I tell people all the time, I say, like, if you come to become, a, if you come to do, be a shower valet at Streetside, two things are going to happen. One is your world is going to get a whole lot bigger. And second, you'll never take a shower for granted again. So every time you jump in the shower, you just say, oh, I'm so grateful for this hot water on my face. For me, there's nothing more incredibly vital than helping somebody who is homeless and helping find housing for them that they move to. Not that they can just find, but that they can qualify and, and afford on a monthly basis going forward. Helping these folks become banked. Uh, almost all the, the women that we do financial counseling for are completely unbanked. They have no checking account, no savings account. Uh, their experience with banking is payday lenders, check cashing places, which should not be the norm. So we're helping them become banked, we're helping them find transportation, and ideally improving their credit, decreasing their debts, and building up savings, as well as their living wage, so that when they're ready to relaunch, they can be independent, they can be self-sufficient. Well, Friends is a small nonprofit, but we could always use volunteers to help us uh, uh, reach and improve our impact uh, here in Collin County, and whether that's working with other nonprofits going into schools or churches to teach. We can not just teach classes, but we can help train the trainers for financial coaching. So we would love people to get involved with that. But uh, it's just as important to be working as collaborative partners with many great nonprofits here in Collin County. And it's one of the important roles that the Collin County Homeless Coalition really provides is the chance for us to interact and partner so that together we can best serve the homeless and um, populations that are in need here. Well, I think it's a hidden issue in Collin County. Um, we're really blessed here with a lot of our corporations and businesses and our homes, but there's a, a hidden population that we really haven't paid attention to, or if we know they're here, we kind of don't want to admit it, but we call these people our neighbors because that's who they are. Um, they're our, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, people our grandparents' age. 
There are veterans, our family members, there are our students in our schools. Um, they're the family next door that suddenly disappear overnight because of domestic violence. Uh, it's, it's widespread, it's hidden, and those that we know of, is they're really the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this year at the Collin County Point in Time Homeless Census, we observed or met 558 people that night alone. That was just one night in the year and one third of them were children. One in 10 was a veteran, and one in five was over the age of 55. So the face of homelessness in Collin County is very, very different than it is in Dallas County. And I'd like to add one thing. Um, a lot of our um, homeless individuals are employed, and that surprises a lot of individuals. So um, they, they're they not going to necessarily be on a street corner holding up a sign. But these are families and these are people that look just like you and I. So they're underemployed oftentimes and uh, so that or they've had some type of crisis where they can't get themselves ahead. Um, so they find themselves in a homeless situation where they've never been in it before.